So the front wings on these new cars are kind of weird, let me explain. As of now, we've had time to analyze three cars, the Haas, the Aston, and the Macca, and all three are surprisingly different, especially the front wings, which really highlights the differences in the aero packages as a whole. So we've got Scarves back to break it down for us because he can just see in CFD. It's actually good that the cars are actually so different as well, because everyone was going, mm, they're all going to be the same. Oh, it's a spec series and all of this sort of misery <laughs> sort of stuff. And yeah. Uh, yeah, every car has been utterly different. But Callum, Red Bull announced their car too. Well, as everyone has been saying, it's literally the Silverstone show car, but in a Red Bull fancy dress. Apparently some of the aero bits don't actually comply with the regs. And Haas was the first to announce a car. And yes, it's a render, not a real car, but it's still the actual design that they're you know, working on right now. And there's some really interesting bits to look into. But the thing that we can tell straight away is it looks very different from the F1 show car. And in particular with those fat fronted side pods. Now you've got to remember that barge boards have been taken away. Lots of the ways that the teams flow the air have been taken away. So Haas are using a big fat side pod front in order to push the air around the car to get the front tire wake away from the car. So it's all kind of like a fake barge board that shape. And what they're also trying to do is bring all the radiators up high and forwards in order to get that super slim rear end. But the most interesting thing was that front wing. It was the first time we saw the separated lower plane of the wing and the nose mounted to the second plane. This then allows for cleaner flow around the lower plane of the wing, which is really important, as well as the flow into the floor staying pretty clean. It's also very like mid loaded. So if you look, the middle of each front wing plane was very aggressively shaped. This is similar to a lot of the 2021 cars, and it was what we expected with these new cars. But then Aston shook things up a little bit. Aston's an interesting looking car. Two things that grab your eye. Most people have noticed, first of all, is that the nose and the front wing appear to be very high. And that's part of two parts of the regulations, really. The regulations do create a higher wing anyway, and Aston have gone for the highest possible wing and nose tip. And the reason for this is in order to get airflow under the car to those underfloor tunnels to create the downforce. And if you had a lower nose, it would rob some of that airflow. So it's just a balance that they're trying to achieve there. Previously, the teams have run the wing as low as possible. And the lower you get the wing, the more downforce you produce from ground effect. If you think about it, the lower you get it to the ground, the narrower that gap that the air has to flow through. So it accelerates more, the pressure decreases, and this creates even more downforce. And the Merc and the Red Bull ran this as low as was legally possible last year, but the Red Bull had a bit more rake, so it was lower in practice. But what's weird is that the Aston has actually sacrificed this effect to keep the air clean and drive more airflow into those aero tunnels, which is pretty clever, but it's also a bold design. Even if that high wing looks very 2008, we'll, we'll get used to it eventually. But really the big story with the uh, Aston is the side pods. Now regulations have changed a lot this year. Uh, so first of all, you've lost the barge boards, you've got the big underfloor tunnels, and then you have um, these open areas at the top of the side pods, which have been banned uh, since 2009. But now you can have uh, open vents, louvers or gills, whatever you want to call them, across the top surface of the side pod. But they're very high. And this means that all the hot air from those radiators go straight out of these louvers. And the clever thing that they've done is not only does it come out of these louvers, but it comes out quite high. So it avoids the beam wing at the back and it avoids the top rear wing. So it kind of goes out through the middle, which is quite clever. So you can see what they're doing, going all in on that floor, getting the front wing well out the way and shrink wrapping the area around the top side of the tunnels. It's all there to create more downforce on the floor. Then using this overbody flow to direct the hot radiator exhaust air through the middle of the rear wing. That's really clever. But then you get this big deep undercut under the side pods. And this is also why teams try to go for a slim rear end on the cars, because you want lots of high energy, high pressure airflow going over the top of the tunnels so that when you reach the beam wing and the trailing edge of the tunnels, you actually create extra downforce. Now the Aston was pretty cool from an engineering perspective. Lots of cool bits that weren't obvious for us F1 tech nerds to get all hot and bothered about. But then came the McLaren and its design was really quite puzzling. You kind of go front to rear and take the path of the air going through the car to maybe understand it a bit better. First of all, their, their nose and front wing is at the lower ride heights that's possible within the regulations. And that's quite unusual. It means that they're making most of the downforce with the front wing in the middle which from my perspective seems almost a negative thing because it's robbing air from the, the tunnels at the back. It does mean the outer portions of the wings are a little bit clearer and work a bit better around the front tyres, but McLaren have obviously found something there. And um, one of the things 
could be is that they've gone from push rod at the front as we were talking in the previous videos to pull rod and that means that where these pull rods come down and meet the bottom of the chassis in between the front wheels they've got a bit of surface there which they can help to turn the airflow back down towards the diffuser now i'm not sure if that completely explains the front wing and pull rod setup but yeah it's it's a theory and uh, we'll, we'll see how that develops and it seems scarbs agrees using the front wing to create downforce but right in front of those aero tunnels that kind of seems bizarre are, right? McLaren must have found a way to get it to work. Normally, each time you use air to create downforce by accelerating it or changing its direction, you use some of that energy, some of that potential for downforce that it has. And the air is no longer laminar and neat. You get slight turbulence in the flow, which then makes it harder to manipulate further when traveling down the car. Doing that on the front wing, right in front of the aero tunnels, seems strange. But McLaren seem to have figured out a way to keep this airflow as neat as possible. We're going to have to see how this develops on the car through the first tests and the races. And then you come to the side pods, which are, again, very different completely. More like the Haas, but in a slightly different way. So quite clever little tricks. First of all, the, the fronts are very flat flat and uh, sided and what they're trying to do is trying to divert airflow laterally around the car and this will actually create downforce at the floor edges something we spoke about so much last year with the regulation changes and then the side pods taper in very very narrow and you have then rather than the coke bottle being quite low uh, in amongst the rear suspension they've moved it up higher and it looks very much like the old red bull what they used to call the tulip exit or the cannon exit and the hot air from the radiators actually exits quite high and again goes back to what we were saying with the Aston they're trying to get it above the beam wing uh, but below the top rear wing so that's pushing all the dirty air out in that area it's quite clever but really this very narrow rear to the car is doing the same thing as the aggressive undercut that Aston are using it's all about improving that flow over the top side of the diffuser which then does its bit to increase the pressure differential across the diffuser and the bigger the pressure difference means more downforce. But then this is another bit to add to the bizarre pile, pull rod on the front and push rod on the rear. Like, what? <laughs> it's like they took the 2021 car, just flipped upside down and <laughs> that'll do. So McLaren have made lots of changes. The other odd one is at the back of the car, they've gone from pull rod at the back to push rod. And again, I don't think this is massively important in terms of performance. It's just a piece of packaging because the gearbox has been shunted back within the wheelbase and within the gearbox case. But it probably just gives them a bit more space to put the springs and the dampers and the rods maybe just keep out of the way of the tunnels a little bit better. But it's interesting, McLaren have kind of switched convention completely on its head with its suspension. Hopefully they haven't bitten off more than they can chew in coping with all of that change in just one car. But that rear push rod suspension is supposed to aid with packaging, which is especially needed with the new shorter cars in the new regulations. But there we are, the Aston is beautiful, the McLaren is kind of weird, and the Haas isn't really finished yet. <laughs> Thanks to Scarves for joining us again, and thanks to you lot for getting us to 800,000 subscribers. That's mad. And thanks for bearing with me. Scott's been away taking a well-needed break before the start of the season. And <laughs> look at him on his pina colada. There you go. See you in the next one.